In the grand tapestry of verbal jamboree and linguistic acrobatics, we find ourselves embroiled in a most peculiar discourse, where former rap maestros camp and maze don the mantles of sports pundits and venture into the tumultuous terrain of media brouhaha. Way serious. Look, we're we're just here to tell the truth. We're not we're not into anything illegal. So you can stop trying to put that together. Let me let me let me put you together right quick. Don't ever come for me and cut. ever in your nice mo- about it. In your in your mother's life, this is not this, this is not what you. Yeah, want. I promise you all the comments say, "Ooh, <laughs> like, you like, picked I, the wrong people you to win." The wrong one, you because I can't tell you how much I don't care. <laughs> I couldn't even tell you how much. Because <laughs> no, I'm gonna be honest with you. And he's more petty than Yo, I am. I'm gonna be so. honest with you. Only reason I'm I, and and if need be, we will revisit this. If yeah, need be, we can revisit we, it. Yeah, but the whole thing this 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 is screaming desperate and yeah. and, and attention. Like yo, it really is. So I'm not going. But if need, nigga, yeah, because he's looking for us. We have season. never, ever, 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 ever tried to take nothing from nobody. Secondly, secondly, we only who, like people that. That we, we love us whole, more we a, than we, have whole, we love ourselves. We have a whole segment on that. Secondly, who was looking out for us? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. we were young. Yeah. yeah, who was looking out for us when we was? Listen, man, we ain't gonna give it no attention. But tread lightly. Be tread careful. Lightly. Cause I tell you one thing, I, I know a lot Ooh, of people are ice. Snipers and sharpshooters. Snipers, sharpshooters, and I know people are ice. I have you escorted back up across the border. Be careful. Be careful. I'm not, and it screams desperation, but we'll, we'll get a petition to get you out the country. Cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to let you stay, but kill it. <laughs> nah, nah, I'll get out the damn country. I'll make, I'll make two calls, man. But I was looking back to dirt. Um, the backdrop, a seemingly innocuous remark by Melissa Ford, co-host of the Joe Budden podcast, hinting at the duo's erstwhile dalliances with the shadows of illegality. However, like seasoned alchemists transmuting base metal into gold, Cam and Mace, with an eloquence reminiscent of Patrick Obahyadbin's labyrinthine lexicon, weave a counter-narrative, a symphony of denial and defiance. In this verbal crucible, Cam and Mace, like the mythical sirens, call upon the winds of truth to sweep away the cobwebs of deception. They vehemently disavow any past transgressions, donning the armor of veracity as they march through the battlefield of allegations. It is a rapier-sharp rejoinder, echoing the ethos of hip-hop, where words are weapons and lyrical prowess is the currency of credibility. Yet, amidst the linguistic fusillade, a subtle undertone of dismissal permeates their discourse. The duo, akin to chess grandmasters, maneuver their pieces with finesse, relegating the accusations to the rank of insignificant pawns in the larger game of life. With a touch of Hota, they caution Melissa against trifling with forces beyond her ken, for they, like Caesar's legions, are not to be crossed with impunity. Cam, the oratorical maestro, in a moment of rhetorical virtuosity, invokes a segment devoted to the sacred precincts of love and appreciation. Here, one can discern a nod to the cultural ethos, reminiscent of the griots of old, weaving tales of valor and love in the fabric of the collective consciousness. It is a subtle admonition to Melissa, choose your battles wisely, for in the realm of affection, they wield a double-edged sword. The duo, reminiscent of philosophers in the Agora, pose a Socratic inquiry who stood by them in the crucible of youth, when the world was an unforgiving coliseum of trials and tribulations? It is a poignant reflection, a mirror held up to the accuser, prompting her to ponder the stones she casts in the glass house of judgment. Amidst the rhetorical tapestry, there lies a wave threat, a specter of consequence lurking in the shadows. The duo, with the finesse of Machiavellian tacticians, suggest that Melissa's words might incur a cost, the possibility of expulsion from the very soil she treads. It is a geopolitical gambit, echoing the historical precedence of banishment, where tongues held the weight of exile. 
the specter of expulsion, subtly introduced by Cam and Mace in response to Melissa Ford's allegations, carries with it a nuanced and geopolitically charged implication that warrants careful consideration. The mere suggestion that one possesses the ability to orchestrate the removal of an individual from their homeland is not merely a rhetorical flourish but a strategic move laden with multifaceted implications. In the grand tapestry of diplomatic chess, the threat of expulsion is akin to a geopolitical checkmate, a move that transcends the realms of discourse and delves into the corridors of power and influence. It is a veiled warning that extends beyond the borders of verbal skirmishes, hinting at a realm where connections, alliances, and the machinery of authority converge. The geopolitical reverberations of such a proclamation are profound. The ability to engineer the extrication of an individual from a country implies a mastery of the labyrinthine bureaucratic systems that govern immigration and citizenship. It is an assertion of influence over the levers of state power, a reminder that, in the intricate dance of geopolitics, certain individuals poses the means to pull strings that others may not even be aware exist. Moreover, the threat of expulsion touches upon the delicate interplay between freedom of speech and the consequences of wielding that freedom in the public domain. It raises questions about the boundaries of expression and the extent to which powerful individuals can curtail dissent through the strategic use of geopolitical maneuvers. In essence, it underscores the potential vulnerability of individuals in the face of those who command the levels of immigration and state authority. The historical resonance of such a threat cannot be overlooked. Throughout history, political dissidents, vocal critics, and inconvenient figures have found themselves on the receiving end of exile as a punitive measure. From ancient Rome to the modern era, banishment has been a tool in the arsenal of those in power to silence opposition, creating a chilling effect that echoes through the corridors of public discourse. In the context of Cam and Mace warning, there's an implicit assertion of their networks and connections, suggesting an ability to navigate the intricate web of political and bureaucratic systems. The mention of expulsion, while presented as a consequence of continued claims, is a reminder of the unspoken nexus between power, privilege, and the ability to shape the narrative. In the final crescendo of their verbal opus, Cam and Mace cast the accusations as desperate whispers in the wind, ephemeral and inconsequential. It is a dismissal steeped in disdain, a proclamation that their narrative stands unassailable against the tempest of insinuation. As the dust settles in this linguistic arena, we find ourselves spectators to a performance both Shakespearean and hip-hop where the power of words transcends the mundane and transforms discourse into an art form. Cam and Mace, like bards of old, leave us with a lingering question in this cacophony of accusations and counterclaims, where does the symphony of truth find its resonance?